square? I am not a square. These people are hippies, rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these kids need help. What they need is a bath. You're passing judgment on people you know nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. When God walks in here, brings me a hippie, and I'll ask him what it's all about, because I do not understand. This house has a very good vibe. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where I, Colin, give you the Christian perspective on whatever it is I want to talk about. And today I want to talk to you about The Jesus Revolution. This is not a movie review. I actually enjoy listening to movie critics every now and then. Yeah, uh, I know, I'm weird. But that's not what this video is going to be. I want to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about the movie. But more importantly, I want to discuss how this movie is affecting Christian culture and the future impact I think it's going to have on Christian culture. Also, potential spoilers ahead. Warning! Spoiler alert! How shall we begin? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Alright, Stan. Thanks. So the good. I genuinely liked watching this movie. I had no idea what it was going to be about going into it. I was actually talking to a buddy of mine on the phone literally an hour before seeing the movie. And I was like, I know it's about the hippies and the 70s and them coming to Christ and stuff, but do you think like Chuck Smith is going to be in it? <laughs> and my friend was like, you really don't know what this is about, do you? Clearly, I did not. So just a little bit of background. I went to a Calvary Chapel when I was about 12 or 13 years old, and I attended that church for about 12 plus years. So I know a lot about Calvary Chapels. I know who Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie are, but I didn't know this movie was going to be revolved around them. In fact, when Greg's character was first called by name, I was like, whoa, Greg Laurie's in this? Is, is he going to meet Chuck Smith? <laughs> So the movie grabbed my attention all the more because I was interested to know where my roots started. So this movie is about the Jesus movement that took place in the 70s when thousands, if not tens of thousands, of hippies came to faith in Christ. It started with a man named Lonnie Frisbee, who was this charismatic street preacher who just always wanted to talk about Jesus everywhere he went. Greg describes his involvement in the movement pretty well in this clip here. And how many years was Lonnie around for all of this? Very short period of time. He was almost like getting the car started. Yeah. You know, that little explosion. He eventually meets Chuck, who invites him to his church, and Chuck's church ends up growing from this small chapel to a tent, to a larger building, and then BAM! The non-denominational Calvary Chapel denomination was born. You think you're funny. You think you're funny. And also Greg ends up coming to faith at some point with Lonnie leading him to the Lord. And Greg ends up with the Harvest Church. And also somehow the Vineyard Churches were born out of this movement. There was a lot, it, it's crazy, J just go see the movie. But there was a spiritual awakening and people all over the world were hearing about Jesus and making decisions to follow after him. From an actual movie production standpoint, probably the best Christian film out there today, other than The Passion of the Christ. Yes, I'm using the label Christian very liberally here, but it wasn't your typical cheesy Christian film. It was very well produced, it had good acting, it had a good story. I actually teared up like three or four times watching the film. I was like, Colin, what is wrong with you? You're supposed to be this judgmental Pharisee sitting in the back criticizing this film. But to my surprise, I was actually enjoying it. After the first hour of the film, I thought, if this ended right now, this would have been a cute movie. But things actually pick up in the second half. It kind of gets tense and emotional and yeah, d just go see it. Theologically speaking, the movie was good in that it esteemed God's word very highly. They quote scripture throughout the movie, and you know, the passages they pick, they're, they're definitely hit and miss, but it does have a lot of scripture in it. Kudos, that's great. They also portray preaching and evangelism as super important. They showed so many baptisms and full emergent baptisms, I might add. Sorry, my Presbyterian brothers and sisters. They showed people leaving their lives of drug, sex, and alcohol to attend church multiple times a week and learning about the Bible and praying and singing to the Lord. They even show the bad side to drugs and the negative effect it can have on someone's life. Don't do drugs. There was one time, and only one time, when they show Lonnie leading Greg in the sinner's prayer, and he mentions that he's a sinner who needs Jesus as a savior, and he repents from his sins. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but you are the savior of the world. You are the savior of the world. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I repent from my sins. I 
repent from all my sins. Yeah, okay, all right. Definitely not the route I would go to lead someone to the Lord, but hey, if that's how it happened, then that's how it happened. Also, interestingly enough, the film kind of takes a stab at charismatic Pentecostalism and pretty much says it's not good. Chuck basically tells Lonnie, who believed and practiced the gifts of the Spirit, that they need to focus more on the preaching of the word than the theatrics of a man who thought he was being led by the spirit. I was impressed. What was a good takeaway from this film? I like the overall message of the movie, which is that God uses sinful people to do extraordinary things, and that God wants to pour out his love to even the most vile, lowly, and despicable. And it actually challenged me to want to share Christ with those that I'm not comfortable sharing the gospel with. Am I really willing to go out of my comfort zone to share the love of God with someone that I wouldn't typically talk to? Great challenge to walk away with. So that was the good. But let's get into the bad and the ugly. So I took some notes while I was watching this film and there were a few things that stuck out to me that made me go, eh. In the opening scene, we have a reporter on the beach interviewing Chuck Smith who's surrounded by hundreds of hippies getting baptized. And Chuck says, Not something to explain. It's something to be experienced. Talking about the movement and people getting saved. And you know, maybe I'm being a little nitpicky, but of course salvation can be explained. In fact, it has to be explained. It's not just something you feel. So when the movie started with that, I was like, oh boy, here we go. But it really wasn't that bad going forward. Another thing I didn't really like was I got this vibe from the movie that unless your church is hip and relevant, you can't make an impact on their culture around you. They show a scene of Chuck preaching at his church and he's literally reading scripture and his congregation is falling asleep as if singing hymns and being faithful to the preaching of the Bible is boring and unfruitful? Which is strange to me because Chuck in real life heavily emphasized the importance of teaching scripture line by line, verse by verse. So I guess all his church was missing was some contemporary music and a young hip evangelist in order to succeed? I don't know. It, it just didn't sit well with me. And honestly, I don't want to nitpick the whole movie because everyone's a critic and anyone can find something that they didn't like or felt like it could have been said better and blah, 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 blah. But there is one thing I want to address. The main problem that I have, the biggest issue that I find with this film, it barely has the gospel in it. Barely. And I wouldn't be making such a big deal of this either if it weren't for all the folks who are saying this movie is preaching the gospel and is evangelical in nature. And I even think with this movie coming out, despite the inaccuracies that are in it, like you said, thank God the gospel is being preached. Yes. It's not though. Both the director and Greg Laurie say that the movie is infused with the gospel and they're hoping it will kickstart the next revolution for Christ. But I think it's also more infused with gospel than some Christian films are. And I just began to pray like, I, I want a Jesus revolution in my own life, in my family's life, in, in my city and in our country again. And that led to making this movie. And so our prayer is that this can happen again and it can be in right now. But how can it do that when it lacks the very thing that's supposed to lead someone to Christ? The gospel message. It has the word gospel in it quite a bit. It has scripture and it shows people giving their lives to Jesus, but an actual clear biblical presentation of the gospel is nowhere to be found. Like I said earlier, when Greg says the sinner's prayer, that is the closest thing we get to a biblical gospel. But there is a sort of gospel that's preached in the movie that's stated over and over and over again, and it's this. You're hurting, but God loves you and wants to help you only if you'll let him. That is the message that is heard loud and clear in this film. And you know what's kind of funny? It's not just this film, but it's heard over at He Gets Us and the Asbury Revival and in the majority of Christian churches today in America. And the undiscerning Christian is ecstatic about this because Jesus' name is going out in the world. And a part of me wants to rejoice with them, but I just can't fully get on board. Because are we all agreeing on the same message? The same Jesus? The same gospel? At one point, Lonnie says to Chuck, there's an entire generation searching for God. And someone else says later on, that the hippies are, quote, searching for all the right things in all the wrong places. And then, and this one gets me the most, there's a scene of Chuck telling a story of when he went to visit the Statue of Liberty and he reads the poem that's inscribed on it, which says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, 
the wretched refuge of your teeming shore. And he says, and I quote, that poem is the essence of Christianity. And I'm like, what? There is so much wrong with all of that. First off, Romans 3 is very clear that no one seeks after God. All have turned aside. All have gone astray. The natural man isn't searching for God. Romans 1 says that the wrath of God is being revealed against the ungodly who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What truth? The truth that we know there's a holy creator, and yet each and every one of us have chosen to sin against him. Go ahead, read Romans 1 through 3. I ain't lying, it says it. I'm gonna say something that's probably gonna offend a lot of people. We aren't the victims, we are the culprits. The reason we're hurting is not because life has given us a bad hand, but because we have separated ourselves from God due to the constant sin and rebellion in our lives. Yes, some of us may have experienced actual injustice in our lives. And yes, there are true victims in the world, but the Bible is clear as day that every single one of us have sinned against the holy God and have offended him greatly. And because of that, because he is just and righteous, he will punish sin and sinners in hell for eternity. You are just a bundle of joy, ain't you? But this is where the good news comes in. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. I know I'm a broken record, but that's okay. Jesus lives the perfect life we never could, and he dies the death that you and I deserve on the cross, and rises from the grave three days later, defeating sin and death forever. And now he offers forgiveness of sins and eternal life to all who repent and believe in him. That's the gospel. That's the good news. But to better understand the good news, we have to talk about the bad news. And that's what this movie lacks. It portrays the hippies as lost, helpless souls in search of God, instead of enemies of God who need newness of life. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. They're not victims. They're dead. And it's their fault. If you think that man's greatest problem is that they're hurting and just need Jesus to fill that God-shaped hole in their heart, you're gonna present the gospel differently than how they did in the Bible. You will emphasize the love of God more and mention sin and God's wrath much less. I know what some of you guys were thinking. Whoa, Colin, you are being way too critical. You need to take it down a notch. This movie isn't heretical by any means and you're all on the same side. Can't you just take the win? Listen, do I think Greg Laurie is a false teacher? Not at all. Do I think he has all the right intentions in wanting to bring people to Christ? Absolutely. But after attending a Calvary Chapel for over a decade, I do know what is emphasized in their evangelism, and they preach that you need to come to Jesus, and he's the answer for everything. Jesus is the answer. Sing it with me. But sometimes they aren't always clear on why. And it's not always, but I've seen it happen before. And the reason this bothers me so much is that I see the effect it has on the church. It creates countless false converts. You have people thinking they're saved because they made a decision to follow Jesus, or they prayed and asked him into their heart, but they're never truly converted because they don't know what the gospel is, and they don't understand that they've offended a holy God and they need reconciliation. And then they end up walking away from the faith and never coming back again because they already tried Jesus and it didn't help them. And then we debate about if they lost their salvation or if they were just never truly saved to begin with. But who cares? People are going to hell and we are not helping them. I've been in a revival that was huge. I was in the Jesus Revolution, 1972, down in New Zealand where literally thousands of people made commitments to Christ but many of them made commitments under the sound of what I call the modern gospel. Come to Jesus, he'll fill the God-shaped vacuum in your heart. He'll give you true happiness and lasting peace. That's not the way to present the gospel. We should preach as Jesus preached. We should open up the commandments and show people they're sinners. Otherwise, they won't find a place of genuine repentance and they'll be false converts. Ray Comfort is absolutely correct. We are doing a disservice to people by trying to bring them to Christ for all the wrong reasons, even if we have all the right intentions. Stay true to the word, don't dilute the message, and watch people turn to Christ and grow in grace and bring so much glory to God. And once again, thank you so much for watching to the end. It really helps out the channel. Feel free to check out this video or this one or click here to subscribe. But only if you want to. You you know, only if you liked it. You don't have to. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's, like, it's not gonna make a difference for you, really. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it helps me a little bit, but you know, it's... Whatever you wanna do. 
Thank you and God bless.